Now the big debate is what, if anything, will change because of the release of this memo. The document is critical of the Deputy Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein, who oversees the special counsel. Some of the president's allies say Rosenstein should now be fired. Some of them also want the special counsel fired. But listen here, another Republican involved in drafting the memo has a very different take, saying yes, it raises questions in his view about the process used to get one warrant, but not fundamental questions about the broader investigation. The memo has no impact on the Russia probe. No, not, not to me it doesn't, and I was pretty integrally involved in the drafting of it. Uh, there is a Russia investigation without a dossier. So to the extent the memo deals with the dossier and the FISA process, the dossier has nothing to do with the meeting at Trump Tower. The dossier has nothing to do with an email sent by Cambridge Analytica. The dossier really has nothing to do with George Papadopoulos' meeting in Great Britain. Um, it also doesn't have anything to do with the obstruction of justice. So there's going to be a Russia probe even without a dossier. Congressman Gowdy is going to get some phone calls from some of his conservative allies in the House. A very level-headed take there. A level-headed take. There's a big debate. Was Devin Nunes honest in writing this memo? Does it have factual errors? Uh, did he lie about whether the FBI disclosed the political source of part of its information? Uh, but to that point, let's start there. Um, that is a reasonable, level-headed judgment that let's debate FBI practices, but it doesn't impact the bigger investigation. That's not what the president tweets. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, the, uh, Congressman Gowdy here is just pointing out what's not in the memo. The, the, the memo doesn't... Uh, it doesn't show any of the highly classified data that was used underneath uh, to base this memo on. It doesn't call into question any of the methods that, uh, that, that, that they used to get these warrants. And, uh, you know, and we should also point out that, that the, the information what hasn't been declassified, is, which is also something that President Trump can do if he wanted. Uh and yeah. Gowdy uh, freed, of course, uh, because he's retiring. I mean, right. that's—I mean—that is why he's uh, off, uh, you know, kind of off uh, message in terms of what the House Republicans uh, want the message to be. And the message, of course, uh, is about this memo. We know it's a highly disputed memo. It's an incomplete memo. Uh, but the ultimate goal is to play to a jury, right? A jury of Republican lawmakers, a jury of uh, Republican uh, voters, uh, and to sow reasonable doubt and to really—I mean—if you look at what the president has been doing over this last many months about. This investigation, calling it a witch hunt, right. saying there's no collusion. I mean, I think this is part of that and maybe one of the most effective parts right. so but far. But I think it doesn't change that overall dynamic. If you are someone in the White House, a Republican, a voter, who's inclined to see the Russia investigation as a witch hunt, this is more fodder right. for your argument. Right. If you believe that the Russia investigation is valid and should continue, this is more fodder for that argument. So while we've spent a week on this, while this has become the new focal point for the White House, it does very little, I think, to change the overall dynamic for the president. Right. It, it certainly may change the court of public opinion in the sense that it gives something else for people to run into their ideological corners, which is why I compliment Trey Gowdy for being level-headed there and going through what it does say and what it doesn't say and what it does change and what it doesn't change. But it gives you talking points for the public opinion. Uh, Bob Mueller operates in a court of law. Mm -hmm. And so we're having these conversations, and we will have them until we get further developments in the investigation. That's a, there's a different standard uh, when you're standing before a judge. But to the president's point, uh, the president's in Mar-a-Lago for the weekend, tweeting yesterday, this memo totally vindicates Trump in probe. But the Russian witch hunt, as you know, it goes on and on. There was no collusion. There was no obstruction. The word now used, I'm not going to read the whole thing. This is an American disgrace. Memo totally vindicates Trump. It does nothing of the sort. Doesn't the even come nothing. close. No, the only no. thing this memo does is it raises questions about how this FISA warrant was obtained on Carter Page, one foreign policy advisor, in late October 2016, right before the elections. And it doesn't get into all the other Trump campaign officials who had contacts with the Russians. It certainly does not talk about... Uh, what uh, is viewed as possible obstruction of justice, what the firing of James Comey, the efforts to change the story about the Trump Tower meeting with Donald Trump Jr. once that came to light. This has nothing to do with it. It deals with one aspect of how that FISA was obtained on Carter Page, and there's a lot of disputes about whether or not the, the facts are correct in how that uh, memo portrays that process. It does give you a little insight, though, in that tweet into what the president has been hearing for the last several days. A lot of the push from the White House to release this memo, have the House Republicans release it, is because Trump was being told by some of his friends and some of his allies that this will vindicate right. you. Now, there is nothing in it that does that, but that is his right. mindset right now. Okay, this I, is going to help me. But you have this, this Republican view shared by the president that there was a conspiracy against Trump 
in a Republican-led investigation. I know Obama was still president, uh, but J James Comey is a Republican by pedigree. And now they attack Rod Rosenstein, who in the Trump administration renews some of these, you know, supports renewing uh, some of this process going forward. So there's allegedly a Republican conspiracy <laughs> against the Republican candidate for president. If there was such a conspiracy and they did not want Trump to get elected, why didn't they leak on any of this before the election? And, and That's why? the part where I asked Republicans. If, you, if these guys were conspiring against candidate Trump, right. why didn't they leak any of this to undermine candidate and, Trump? And, Somebody help me. And in that tweet, too, John, he <laughs> says that yeah. the FBI was trying to influence the election. Remember, right. according to this memo, remember, this uh, says that this Carter Page FISA warrant was obtained on October 21st, 2016. What happened a week after that? James Comey sends a letter to Congress reopening the Clinton right. email uh -huh. investigation. Right. So that had way, far more impact on the election. Hillary Clinton blames it for costing her the election. That's a different argument, but it had a much bigger impact than this Carter Page FISA warrant, which nobody knew about until much more recently. Uh, it, it, go ahead. And you can't find anyone else in the White House right now to say that as clearly as President Trump has. I haven't yet to talk to anyone in the White House who believes this vindicates anything that's happening with the Russia probe. Mm -hmm. And to your point uh, about some of the backstory of, 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 of the FISA warrant and some of the investigations into Russia, uh, uh, Page has been on... Uh, uh, counterintelligent agents radar going back to 2013. We have a report up on the Wall Street Journal, uh, WSJ.com, about this. Uh, he, he, he's been, he's been, they've been looking at him for years, well before he was involved with Trump, uh, and he's been under surveillance since the end of uh, 2016, before the election. But that warrant has been approved several times. It's been approved at least once by a Justice Department official that Trump appointed, and all the uh, and the, the, the folks at the Wall Street Journal have talked to said all the judges who have approved this have been a Republican appointees. And one of the things that Chairman Nunes and his allies are upset about is that they think that they went to court to get this warrant using the so-called Steele dossier, uh, which was originally funded by the Washington Examiner. Do I have this right? The Free Beacon. I'm sorry. The Washington Free Beacon, a Republican conservative donor, and then taken over by the Clinton campaign. The Democratic National Committee paid for this. And they're saying that they made the case for this warrant with information from that dossier. And they say, Devin Nunes writes, the FBI did not disclose that some of its information came from a politically biased source. Uh, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, the Washington Post, others reporting, no, actually, they did disclose uh, that some of this came. So the Democrats are arguing the central tenet of this is just false. And, and we lack a lot of information about what else the FISA yeah. court was told right. and when this warrant was, was sought. You know, the FISA courts are one of the most secretive parts of our government. It's actually amazing that we now have this much information about, about one warrant. But it is, it is just a tiny bit of information about what this court was told. And... If it was, if they were told that it was funded by Democrats, it's unclear to me whether that would be enough for them to reject it. Right, if, right. I, I, always, I always make the point that if I'm, a, if I, you know, if I'm an independent and you're a Republican, if I'm a Martian and you're from Venus and yeah. I tape record you robbing a bank, right. and give it to the police, you still rob the bank. Yeah, is no the, where the tape came yeah, from. I mean, is the information <laughs> valid? Were they able right. to corroborate it? I mean, you can tell in this memo the kind of cherry picking that's going on. They, for instance, say uh, that the part of the FISA warrant uh, was a clip from Yahoo News, an article right. uh, by Mike, Michael Isikoff. Some people say, right. well, why did they even? And include that. Certainly, they included much more of in a clip from Yahoo.com, and we'll see. I mean, we've had Democrats uh, say that they want to release a, a rebuttal to this. We'll see if that sees the light of day. Congress has got to review it, and then it's got to be voted out of uh, committee, uh, and then it's got to be approved by the president. And we'll, I mean, good luck with that. Is is it proof? I want to listen to a quick snippet of sound here: a Republican and then a Democrat. Uh, we're going to get in a moment. We'll talk about the substance of the investigation. But listen here, and I'll have a point on the other side. Everyone knows the dossier was the basis for getting the warrant. Andrew McCabe said, but for the dossier, we wouldn't have got the warrant. That's what the memo points out. I was in the room, John, when McCabe testified. Jim Jordan was not. And I will tell you that that part of the Nunes memo is just flat out wrong. It is not true. That is not what Andrew McCabe said. Is this, we'll get to the substance of the special counsel investigation in a few minutes, but is this debate proof that forget Congress? That, 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 yeah. that, that the congressional investigations have just become so partisan. The Senate Intelligence Committee has been pretty quiet. Yeah. Uh, but is there any reason to believe that there will be a document produced by any of these congressional committees that American people can read, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, an independent or somewhere in between, and view it with credibility as opposed to through that? Certainly not in the House. I mean, the House Intelligence Committee has been going downhill like this no. for months. This is the latest breakdown and certainly it's hard to see it getting back on track and there's a separate investigation led by house republicans looking into the fbi actions in 2016 really going after the right. clinton email investigation we'll see what the senate intelligence committee ultimately produces i'm 
pretty skeptical they're going to be able to come to some sort of bipartisan consensus on that key question about collusion. But right. they're trying to look, do things in a more bipartisan right. manner, deal with things like election security first, something that perhaps both sides can agree on, well, how to make sure this does not happen I, again. I, I really would take important. that as progress if yeah. they focus on the election security part. 